Western world, we get very comfortable and we, we like to shout and we love all the music, but my friend, when the chips are down, when the chips are down and you have to give your life for Jesus, then it may be another story. Because I don't know about you, but you see, there are two feet that I walk with in life. A left one and a right one. And when Jesus says, come, I say, yes, now come. And I take a step of faith with the left foot. But the other foot is a foot of fear. Because when Peter said, Lord, did you bid me to come? Yes! The next step, what about that? The waves, the wind. Huh. You start to sing. That's life. That's life. That's what life is. It challenges you. It challenges you to begin to trust God in every difficult circumstance that you go through. When you're going through hardships, we all pray, Lord, help me in my difficulties. How many of you never prayed that? We all pray, Lord, help me in my, my circumstance. Help me through this difficulty. I don't know what to do. Father, help me. I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a difficult place. Word of God talks about the saints of old. I want to come to a conclusion this morning. It talks about the saints of old. In Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about all the saints of old. The men and women of faith. And then it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews, 1, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe the <coughs> So the word begins to go on. It goes down through Enoch and Abraham and Moses. It goes to all the great men and women of faith. And then it says, some of them were even sawn in two. Then it takes all these great men and women, Elijah's and Elijah's, and all the men and women that were there of, of great faith in Hebrews 11. And then the writer writes this, he says, of whom the world was not worthy because they were people of faith. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves and, and, and on, on the earth. And all these, having obeyed a good report through faith, received not the promise. The promise was Jesus. They still didn't receive it yet. Listen, it says, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be perfect. So together with us, in the heavens, we're going to see him. Because the writer of Hebrews carries on. And he writes, writes these words, he says, Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. These are all the witnesses. Witnesses that when you get up there, they'll say, When Pastor Johan walks into the, to the, to, to glory, they're going to say, Yes, here's Johan. And he's going to say, the first thing that he does, he's going to look and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I remember there was a song, Lord built me a cabin in the corner of Glory Land. You won't get a cabin, my friend. You're going to be at his feet. And you're going to say, God, I want to bless you because you are more than conqueror. You are victorious. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the Christ. You're the divine God. You are eternal. You're the Father. You are God. You are heaven's keeper. You are invincible. You are God. You are majestic. Lord, you are wonderful. Then the writer says, Therefore, seeing we also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, listen, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Why did he endure the cross? despising in his shame and he sat down at the right hand of God because he saw the victory he could have given up he could have called he even said that to Peter I could call 12 legions of angels to protect me if I want but he didn't he became God's sacrifice hence we understand the word of God says for God so loved the world because God is a giver God gave his son God gave his all God gave his whole love. He gave everything that you and I may have eternal life. Hence, friend, when we get there to the end of our lives and people say, there is no God, let me tell you, without Christ, you have no hope. 
But with Christ, the apostle writes and he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I said I was going to close. And here comes the second close. In the church of the day, when we want to draw people, and we say, come for a healing. Come and get your eyes open. Wonderful. I believe Christ heals. But that's not the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle that you can ever see is when somebody kneels down and says, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior, and I ask you to wash every sin away. And there's a change in that life when God changes them from sinner to saint. And you are saints in God. When you've given your life to Christ, you're a saint. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Glory. And you walk away and say, yes, I, I once was that, but I am crucified. Now I live. That's what baptism is all about, my friends. It's the old life gone, and I'm living a new life. It's not the, forgive me, it's not being baptized because my friends got baptized. And now I'm a young person, and now I want to be baptized again and again. And no, it only happens once. You're born once into the kingdom of God. You say, I'm getting rid of that old kind of life. I don't want to live that anymore. I don't want that kind of thing. It's even shameful to talk about that kind of life. Because Christ is in now in my heart. And I've turned around. Metanoia. I have repented. I've come towards God. And I'm alive. And as I get out of the water, I say, yes, that symbolizes what's happened in my heart. He's alive in my heart. He's the resurrected Christ. He's Lord of all. He is wonderful. Amen. <clears throat> and hence the writer of Hebrews says, today, as I wait for him, he's my high priest. I look back in Jerusalem and I look at the empty tomb and I say, wonderful, that it happened 2,000 years ago. That was the greatest victory that ever, ever, ever happened. But there's coming a time that the Word of God says, every eye will see Him. Every eye will see Him. And Paul puts it into this way and he says, and every tongue will confess and every knee will bow and say, Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come stand with me this morning. First thing I want to ask is a sense of strong emotion to be able to say it. Do you really know Jesus as your Savior? Do you really know that Jesus is your Lord? And if you're not so sure, and you're not so sure about your salvation, and the devil has been on your back and you're doubting your salvation, and the Lord Jesus just wants to touch you so that you may know that the Word of God says these things are written that you may know that you are a child of God. If you have doubts this morning, don't be afraid, just put up your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that the power of the Spirit of God will touch you, that you will be changed in an instant. Pastor, I'm not too so sure. Just put up your hand. I want to pray for you. Wow. Okay. There's a number of you. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just close your eyes where you are and let's pray together. Lord Jesus. I was not sure. And I am not sure you're in my heart. So this morning I want to ask you, Lord, to come into my life and to become my Savior and wash my sin away. I need you to change my life, Lord. I need you to come in and my life anew. Make it anew, Lord. I want to believe you from today onwards that you have written my name in your book of life. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Simple prayer like that. If you're not so sure and afterwards you, you can welcome to come and speak to me. If you said that prayer, you're welcome to come and talk to me afterwards. But I believe that the Spirit of God is here challenging the church challenging the church
to rise up. Amen. Amen. To rise up as the church. Jesus lives in you. Say after me, He's alive in my heart. He's alive in my heart. Say it again, He's alive in my heart. He's alive in my heart. He lives in me. He lives in me. He reigns in me. He reigns in me. Hallelujah. You know that Christ lives in you. When you are challenged by the world and you're challenged by temptation and you're challenged by the devil and all kinds of areas of life challenge you, then you can be able to stand up with those that are next to you and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. 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 It's because he's alive in my life. Come and let's pray together. Holy Spirit, I want to say thank you. Spirit of the Lord Jesus. I want to say thank you. I want to thank you, thank you that it is called Holy Spirit. Numa Hagiyon, the wind that is holy. It's because you live in our lives that you take us and you separate us and you make us yours and we are sanctified and we become yours. We become yours and you put our names in the Lamb's Book of Life and you've given us life to live, Lord. And I want to pray this morning that the church would rise up and become the church in South Africa, in Port Elizabeth, in our very churches where we're visiting. We would become alive and we would be the people that go back, forth, go back and forth and say, Jesus is Lord. And we'd make the difference. So touch us this morning, Lord, with your love. That we as the church may be the church. We may be the resurrected Christ, the little Christ. Your word says, Christ in me. We are little Christs. We are the image. When people see us, they see Jesus. They hear Jesus. When we walk, they see Jesus. When we talk, they see Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, not to fail you. Help me, Lord, to be able to do what you want me to be able to do. Pray that your anointing rest upon us that when we walk out of this building this morning, we are in the mission field. There are people out there, Lord, that will live for hatred. Their words are hatred. Everything is hatred. But your word says, Christ in me, the hope of all glory. He loves me. And he loves you. Passionately. So I pray that your hand, Lord, will be upon each believer here this morning. Every person that's given their life to the Lord Jesus or made a reconfession, every child of God who said Jesus is Lord, I want to pray that your blessing rest upon them. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.